In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the t-distribution, and the t-distribution is very similar to the z-score. I'm going to review a little bit of that as well. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about the history of the t-distribution. Normally, I don't talk about things, but this is William Gossett. And what makes him interesting is, is he actually used the t-distribution to help improve Guinness beer, where he worked. So he helped make tasty beer. Now the normal distribution looks like this. And in the green area we have the acceptance area and in the red area we have the rejection regions. And this is called a two-tail test. 95% of the area of the curve is in the green area and 5% are in the rejection area or 2.5% in each tail. Sometimes the tails are referred to as alpha and if you're in a fraternity or sorority, you probably know that already. And that's equal to 0 0.025. And sometimes it's called a p-value, which is also known as the probability value. Right there. Or the p-value. So now we have the z-scores. And the z-scores are 1.96 and negative 1.96. Remember, that's the number of standard deviations away from the mean. 1.96 is just about 2, and that's important because I tell my students, you know, when you get to 2, it's a lot easier to remember than 1.96. And this 2 value is going to be important for T statistics as well, or the T distribution also. We write it like this. So we say if Z is less than or equal to negative 1.96, or if z is greater than 1.96, we reject the null hypothesis. Or if z is about 2 or negative 2. Now the t-distribution, or t-test, looks about like this little uh, gold or the curve right there. And it's shaped, it's a little shorter. Let me bring in the normal distribution so you can kind of compare and it's shorter and fatter than the normal distribution. It's probably self-conscious about that as well. So let me fade out the normal distribution. And so the curve again looks very similar to the bell curve. We do the same thing. We put 95% in the middle and then we put in the rejection regions we put 2.5% in each region. Now imagine that the sample size is equal to 2 which is very small we would set up a critical region, or t-score would be negative 12.7 and 12.7. So we say if t, if t is less than or equal to negative 12.7, or if t is greater than or equal to 12.7, we reject. And what do we reject? We reject the null hypothesis. So we reject if it's greater than 12.7 or less than negative 12.7. I'll put the normal distribution back in, and that's what that is. And now that's the t distribution. What happens is if the sample size goes up, as the sample size goes up, the t distribution becomes more and more like the normal distribution until eventually, here we go, it is exactly the same as the normal distribution especially at large samples, actually only at large samples. So at large samples, really samples greater than 20, you're going to get the same result. You'll find this table at the back of most stats books. And this is for a two-tail test, where we have 5% of 0 0.05 in the two tails, 2.5% in the tails. And of course, there are two tails that add up to 5%. That little DF up in the left-hand corner there that's yellow now stands for degrees of freedom. And degrees of freedom are simply sample size minus 1 is equal to degrees of freedom. If we have a sample size of 2, our degrees of freedom is 1. And that's where we get the 12.706 or 12.7 that I used before from this table. Now, as the sample size gets larger, so does the degrees of freedom. And if you notice, at 19 degrees of freedom, the sample size is 20, which is equal to, and the critical area is equal to 2.093, which is highlighted by the red there. 
which is very close to 1.96, or about 2. Now, at very large samples, infinity, or anything larger than 100, the critical value is 1.96, and it's exactly the same as the normal distribution, or theoretically the same, I should say. Degrees of freedom is equal to sample size minus 1. Sample size greater than 20. T is similar to Z, very similar to Z. And that's it for this tutorial.